Everybody say hi to Mel. Mel, this is everybody. Everybody, this is Mel. Mel came over here today to us to give me the opportunity to talk to you about the struggles that I usually deal with when it comes to his service. What's his service? Well, let's take a look at it. So cool, I brought out my comb and I'm using the wide tooth section and I'm basically combing through the hair with the grain and making sure that I'm going in the same direction that he would brush it. After that, I thought I was gonna bring out the one and a half guard, but I changed my mind, went with the two um, because he was a little unsure of what guard I should use. He kind of left it up to me and this, and that's a cool thing to experience as a barber when, the, when a client trusts you enough to just use your judgment to give them the best look. And I was gonna do that one and a have like I already mentioned but I changed my mind and wanted to use the two because sometimes when it comes to certain waivers certain hair types going too low will make their pattern look less interesting um less detailed uh you know when it comes to 360 waves they want to maintain a certain look the pattern dictates the look and if you go too low on that pattern you almost pretty much don't even have one so you got to keep that in mind as a barber when you're cutting a 360 waiver or anybody with waves you have to keep in mind that certain guard lengths will affect them differently so his hair type going a two is pretty much the lowest you should go because after that it's just going to be so low that he's no longer a waiver and he doesn't want that and neither do you trust me you don't want to take that away from them they work too hard for this maybe maybe not mel mel does mel mel Another thing that I forgot to mention is that I use a dime size balding base. You know, uh, that, that, that initial base of this low taper, I've had to learn to make it smaller and smaller. There was a time that I used to make a bigger section when I would bald it out right before I started the fading process. And I realized that after a few tries, of cutting his hair it just never felt low enough and then when it came down to the lineup the lineup wasn't as detailed as i felt it should be uh, i remember one time actually the first time that mel came to me he showed me a picture of a barber that cut him in the past and it was sharp what like it was such a good haircut picture because i mean i don't know if the, if the barber you know finessed it because you know there's a lot of barbers that finesse on the game you know when it comes to instagram and all that so so i i just felt either way that the c cup was strong and you know enhancements i love enhancements I love using it. I don't use it on all my clients. We're gonna definitely use it on Mel, but I feel that enhancements shouldn't always play the part when it comes to the lineup. You know, I feel like if you could do all you can do in the foundation of the cut to dictate how strong a C cup is, for example, then this matters. The, the way you set the balding guideline dictates how well that lineup is gonna be. So that dime size lineup that Nata showed us uh, a few haircuts ago, um, that that's a lineup or a, or, or a foundation should i say uh that matters a lot to me now and and uh you know as far as the back the back i go a little bit higher with the taper um so i don't mind going a little bit higher with the with the balding section but mel something i learned about mel is that his hair or sh should i say his skin is a little bit irritated i don't know if that's if you noticed it when i combed the the hair uh, against the grain he has a few red spots right and you know like when i deal with some breakouts i don't like exposing it you know if i if i get a ball fade i don't even like to go high enough to show if i have a pimple or something or or ingrown hair that's embarrassing that's something comfortable for most people so in the case of mel i realized you know what i'm gonna make sure that these tapers that i do on him because he also has a little bit of uh, irritation on the sides i'm gonna make sure that these tapers are low enough to where the light areas won't show as much and somewhere in between that transition even if some of it is exposed it's not as bad because it's got some hair it's got some darkness from the hair to kind of cover it up and you're able to kind of finesse with that so always customize the haircut to the client is basically what i'm trying to say that was a big I was veering off a little bit on that one, but just know that matters. Keep that in cons into consideration. And, and you know, that's why the consultation is so important, right? That's why you want to talk a little bit to your client, but you don't want to talk too much. All right. You don't want to talk too much. You know, get what you need, get what you need to go what you want to get.
get, ooh, I like that one. Get what you need to go where you want to get. And in between, you could, you know, you could do the small talk in, in, here and there. But remember, guys, this is a time draining cut. You cannot mix too much conversation with a time draining cut. It just does not work out well, I promise you. Remember, I learned to, to start spraying it on my fingers first because uh, there was a time I used to spray the hair directly. Um, but you know, when you get that done to yourself, you start realizing, you know what? It's kind of uncomfortable. The hairspray is a little bit cold. This just isn't, this is just, it's not, it's not cool. I don't like it. So um, keep that in consideration. There's a lot of us barbers that don't go to other barbers to get a haircut. Sometimes we cut ourselves. I'm not that guy, but go to other people to get service. So you start re recognizing recognizing a few things that maybe you do that you don't like that you should improve. I highly, highly recommend that guys. lineup came out nice and sharp as you can see boys and girls make that extra step with that foundation i'm telling you this uh, his past services never looked this good because because of that section that i used to make when i when i cut him uh and and check this out like that plus also you know using some of that hairspray it makes that line pop you know there's definitely a lot of people that don't like using hairspray or any type of spritz to make the line pop but i'm 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 a fan of it you know you know, where a lot of barbers like using enhancements and and I feel this is another way of enhancement, enhancing your cut, but also having a better frame for your haircut that can help you also give a better enhancement with, with color. Because I feel by having these sharp lines, you know exactly where you want to put the, the color and where it's going to suit it best. So anyways, we have, we have, we have made it to a, to a point in this haircut, boys and girls that, you know, you got to take your deep breaths. All right. It, it doesn't matter. It could be a, 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 a weak hairline or it could be a strong hairline. You're going to have a moment where you're going to have to step back and think about what you're about to do. You know, there was a time in my career that I would, I would start the lineup on the side profile of the client. I would be on the side. I wouldn't be directly in front of them. And guess what? There would be times I gave them that high corner and it's not fun. So let's get in front of our clients. Let's, it's, you know, for some people it's, on, it's a little uncomfortable. You don't like being direct, directly in front of somebody. You, you think they're gonna lock eyes with you, but it may be awkward for you, right? It used to be awkward for me. But guess what? You gotta get through that. You gotta, gotta rip outside of that. All right, so after all that shenanigans, we have to face our client back to the mirror and double check, you know what I'm saying? And after that, guess what? We gotta connect. Connect, not with the eyes, with the lineup. Look directly at your client and look back at the mirror. Use those mirrors and, you know, the light sometimes can get in the way. On the beard now guys i feel like i'm rushing through this a little bit too much but i will say this guys if you feel like i'm rushing a little bit too much on this service make sure that you sign up for the extended version of this service i'm actually breaking down in detail how i go about this service on the 245 academy i'm gonna leave the link below and you're gonna be able to connect with me and everybody else you actually can interact with me so if you want to ask me like detailed questions about what in the world i'm doing right now with his eyebrows
it comes to applying shave gel to the beard guys i don't like to put too much because then it get, makes a mess on the beard itself and we don't want that we want to you know be as clean and and you know organize with all the things that we are using on these services right so when it comes to lining up our good old friend mel here make sure you wipe the cheek the area that you covered with shave gel you want to come back and dry that area a little bit up right above where the lineup is so you're gonna have you know a, a nice amount of pull a nice amount of tension when you line your client up as you can see i use a lot of my thumb to add a little bit of tension and come back with the razor to get a more defined line if the skin is moving all over the place loosely while you're using a razor on your client's face the possibility of you slicing your client and possibly also liking this video is much higher and i'm i'm pretty sure you still want to like this video but you don't want to hurt your client and slice them up so let's add a little bit of tension and make sure that area the area that you're gonna put your thumb on is dry because you know otherwise we're just gonna be slipping all over the place Okay, gra grab you that oil sheen. This oil sheen right here is one of my favorites. Uh, I love the, uh, the the cotton candy smell that it gives. To me, it smells like cotton candy. And as you can see, your boy Fonz right here is setting up. You gotta kind of brace yourself. When you're, when you're recording a video, right? You gotta brace yourself when you do the, the 360 spin off the chair. And you know, this is the awkward position I gotta get in to be able to spin the freaking chair around for you.